Well, hello again. Our guest today is Tom Stevenson, who's the president and CEO of Healthcare Management Systems. Tom, welcome to Lipscomb. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you. Tell us about Healthcare Management Systems. What do you do and how do you do it? Well, we are a software development company for uh, hospitals and healthcare facilities. So we've been in business uh, about 27 years. We develop financial and clinical software solutions for for hospitals and and other healthcare facilities um, we um, we have about 680 customers around around the United States uh, all different sizes of and types of, of hospitals um, uh, acute care hospitals uh, behavioral hospitals long-term acute care uh, so we provide pretty much an end-to-end -end solution for hospitals to, to run their their business and the and the clinical side of, of what they do in treating their patients. You're part of a, a very interesting part of the healthcare industry, the healthcare information segment of the industry. It's been a lot of talk about the future of healthcare uh, in healthcare reform. There was a lot of discussion mm -hmm. about technology. Talk to us about your company's role in that and where you see healthcare information technology moving in the years ahead. Well, it certainly is um, is one of the drivers in the healthcare reform uh, discussion in terms of not only how we deliver healthcare, but the access to the information. And I think ultimately the, the goal behind this and where, um, where the market is moving and where we're working with our customers is how do we share the information. And for, for, you know, for so long, the information that was captured within a hospital stayed inside the four walls of the hospital. So the ultimate goal that, that I think everybody's pushing toward is, you know, if, if you go to the hospital here in Nashville and you have tests or you have x-rays or whatever, uh, and then um, two months from now you're in Knoxville and you have to go to the hospital, then they can access those records and see, hey, he had this test done two months ago and here's what the results were. Um, and, and so we're, we're right at the, the beginning of the ability to do that. The first thing that has to be done is implementing the systems uh, in, in a widespread way so that that information is captured uh, and then put it together in a format that can be shared uh, at a state level, at a uh, regional level, and ultimately at a national level. So a lot of the driver behind this is, is first of all, we've got to have the systems in place to capture the information. Uh, and then secondly, how do we standardize it and put it in a, in a format that, that uh, everybody can access? Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of our business today is, is kind of the first part of that in getting the systems in place uh, in the hospitals. And uh, the, the clinical side of, of delivering that technology is behind. And so we're working with our customers to put those pieces in place so physicians are placing their orders electronically rather than writing them out on a piece of paper. Um, and then the ability then to share that information outside the walls of the hospital. So that's a big driver from a technology standpoint. Um, and, and if you look at where, you're, you know, where the banking industry is today, that anywhere you go, you can put your card in a machine and, and access your account and draw money out. Um, ultimately, that's, I, I think, the, the goal for, for healthcare is that anywhere you are, uh, a clinician, a physician can access your information uh, or that you can access your information and have that readily available. Um, so we're, we're at the beginning part of that, um, uh, that process today, but I think ultimately that's got to impact the delivery of care um, and, and I think the reform part of this is very is instrumental in driving that process. The health care reform legislation which was passed in 2009 included I believe billions of dollars mm -hmm. to promote health care information technology and, it, and the idea is predicated upon the concept that this will help to drive down the overall cost mm -hmm. of health care. 
Do you buy that? Do you think that's what will happen? Uh, do you feel like uh, we will be successful in driving down health care costs? I, I think ultimately it will help. I, I'm not convinced that it's the, the be-all, end-all solution to that, that particular issue. But I think the ability to, uh, again, have the access to the information so that, that we're not um, uh, repeating tests, uh, that we're not doing multiple tests when, you know, when the information's available from a, pre, a prior visit or a different, uh, a different hospital, uh, I, I think certainly can play a role in that. Um, how big a role, I, I, I'm not sure we know right now, but I think, um, I, I think it certainly has a place in that. Uh, I think the, the challenge we face with that today from, a, um, from an implementation perspective of that is we, we're incenting physicians, we're incenting hospitals to implement the technology. Um, but the incentive comes on the back end after they've already Im implemented. Uh, the challenge a lot of them are facing today is they don't have the, the resources and the capital to implement the technology now. So, uh, so that's a challenge that, that, especially in smaller community hospitals, is the access to capital to even implement the technology so they can get the incentive. So, uh, so that's, a, that's a challenge we're facing, but, but I think ultimately we'll get there. Tom, one of the scariest documents I think I've ever read in my life uh, is the uh, trustees report of Medicare mm -hmm. as it projects what's going to happen in health care in this country. There are 73 million, I believe, baby boomers about mm -hmm. to begin to turn 65, and this process continues now for uh, the long distance in the future. Uh, what is your view of the future of health care? Uh, do you feel like we're going to be able to cope with the health care costs that are coming and still remain solvent as a country? I, I think it's going to be very difficult given our current model and, and, and the way we're delivering care today uh, and the, the access to care that we have today. I think it's going to be very challenging because, as, as you said, there's going to be a demand on it. Um, that, that's only going to be increasing and the ability to, to fund it, as we know today, is, is in serious trouble. So I, I think there's going to be some real challenges with that and, and uh, technology is only one answer to that, to that problem. I'm not sure what all the answers are, uh, but I don't think you completely solve it with technology um, and certainly the, um, the, the ability to manage that cost going forward uh, and, and I think what, what you're seeing today uh, to, to sort of help that is really becoming more of a consumer-driven health care so that I'm more in control mm -hmm. of what, you know, what I'm going to have done and by whom, and, and, and I have access to what the charges are going to be, uh, and I can shop, you know, and I can be selective in, in where I go. Um, and I think we're only beginning to, you know, we're on the beginning of that from a consumer standpoint. We have to really become educated in that process and what it means. You know, we're, we're so accustomed to, I go to my doctor, he says, you need this, and you're going to go here and get it, and we never, we never question that. Um, and, and I think that model has to change to where we're in control of, of, our, of, our da of the data, of the records, and we're in control of, of where I go and who I see and, and, uh, and, and can control that cost differently. And I think that the more we, we go down that path along with the technology, uh, I think we can certainly make a difference in it, but it's still, it's still going to be very challenging from that standpoint. You're here today to talk about ethics, and I don't know an industry that's really challenged more than uh, the medical industry. Uh, ethics is a part of many different aspects of uh, the decision making that has to take place in, in the healthcare industry. We heard a lot of rhetoric while the healthcare reform legislation was being debated about death panels. Mm -hmm. uh, as we think about the future of, of healthcare, it becomes uh, increasingly difficult to cope with end of life decisions. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts about uh, the ethical dilemmas uh, posed by end of life decision making? Well, it, it is a very challenging and challenging dilemma, and um, I, I think. The, the, the ability for the individual and the individual's families to be in control of that process. Um, I, I still think there is a place for that. Um, the, you know, how far you can take that from a medical standpoint uh, certainly is what creates the dilemmas that we have today. And as our technology, the medical technology 
uh, and the science of medicine progresses, then there's going to certainly, I think it's only going to increase because the abilities that we have to do, um, you know, more um, miraculous things from a mm -hmm. medical standpoint mm -hmm. is only going to increase the dilemmas that we have there. And, and at some level, you know, to me it still becomes a personal and a family issue in terms of, of what, um, what I'm expecting in terms of care for my for my mother, who's who's an aged person in, in poor health, and 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 what is my responsibility in that as an individual uh, to cope with that and to deal with that, aside from the scientific and the medical part of that, and what's the quality of life, uh, you know, that uh, that that is maintained by that, and then how do we deal with that from a, you know, from an ethical standpoint, and and I think. Um, uh, unfortunately, that's one of those that, in theory, it sounds really easy, but in practical terms, it's a very difficult one to deal with. Our guest today is Tom Stevenson, who's the uh, president and CEO of Healthcare Management Systems. Tom, you uh, have been very successful in your career. What advice would you give our students uh, as they begin their careers and think about the future? You know, I, I think the... Um, the most important thing, and, and especially as we talk some about ethics today, um, working hard, understanding uh, at the end of the day it's about doing the right thing. Um, you know, there's, there's a certain amount, uh, as I look back on my career, there's a certain amount of luck in being in the right place at the right time. But I think it's, it's also defined by, by just working hard. I always tell people, you know, no matter what room I'm in, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but, but I'm going to outwork you. Um, and, and so I just encourage anybody that starting out a career in the middle of a career, uh, it, it's about worth, work ethic. It's about uh, doing the right thing. It's about treating people right. Uh, whether it's customers, whether it's employees, it's about it's about being fair and being honest, um, and and at the end of the day, you know, giving value to people for what you do, no matter what it is, it, it's about delivering value to them. Um, and if you can lay your head on a pillow at night and say, you know, I did a good job today, I worked hard, and I treated people the right way, um, th then I think you're successful. Um, and, and you know, whether it's doing what we do in terms of technology or whether it's you know working at a grocery store uh, all of those same principles apply uh, and so I think it's just important for anybody what I teach my kids is it's about hard work uh, and, and it's about doing the right things for people and if you can do that you know the rest of it falls into place um, it doesn't mean there's chat there's not challenges there's not big decisions, hard decisions, but if you, if you frame it all in that, you know, in terms of that, then, uh, uh, then I think you can be successful. As you look back on your career, what are you, what are you the proudest of and what would you take a mulligan again to do? Uh, wow. Well, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, um, I, I'm very thankful and very proud of, of the way that, that my company and the people that, that I've worked with throughout, uh, throughout my career at HMS, the way we've treated our customers. Um, we, we, we are very fair with our customers. We deliver value to our customers. We have long-term customers. The first, the first hospital system I installed some 26 years ago, they're still a customer today. Um, and so it really is about how we treat people. Um, we, you know, people want to do business with us because of the way we do business. Um, the, the, the mulligan I would take is, is um, you know, there, there are times when you have relationships with customers and you, over the long term, you maybe take them for granted and you don't value that relationship the way you should. Um, and in one particular case, I, I, you know, we kind of fell into a very comfortable position and, and maybe didn't treat the customer like we should, understanding the value of that relationship and, and fortunately we you know we caught that in time that it didn't you know it, it's it created a situation that we were able to to correct and, and have a very strong relationship but just just that recognition early on that every one of the customers is extremely important and you have to treat them all that way tell me what uh, what you enjoy doing in your spare time um, I, I read a lot. I, uh, I like to exercise a lot, work out, uh, try to work out every day. 
my family and I love to go to the beach and go to the mountains and, and just get away. Um, I, um, I try to, to cycle when I can, uh, kind of a way to get out in the country on my own or with my son. I'm not a big golfer, so I, you know, I can't say I like to do that. Uh, I, try, I do it every now and then when I have to, but, uh, but just you know, being with my family and doing things with, with my kids is, is, uh, is always good. If you could advise me to read one book, uh, particularly a business book that you've read recently, what, what comes to mind? Um, uh, one I, that I... Um, I read, I've read now three times, and I actually just finished teaching a class based on this, on leadership. Uh, it's called Hand Me Another Brick, and it's, um, it's a book on leadership principles from the book of Nehemiah in the Bible. Uh, and and it, it takes uh, Nehemiah and his experiences about building the wall and, and breaks it down into real practical, everyday um, looks at leadership. Um, and I think the principles that are there in that book um, are, are things that anybody in any position of leadership can can learn from, and they're 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 just very practical things that you um, uh, you know when you when you read them and think about it, it, it really can make a difference in I think how you approach leadership every day. Our guest today is Tom Stevenson, who's the president and CEO of Healthcare Management Systems. Tom, you made a comment when you were speaking to the students earlier today that all of your employees are shareholders. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very interesting concept. How, how did you do that, number one? And number two, why did you do that? Well, in, um, in 1999, uh, the two founders of our company were um, looking at, essentially looking at an exit strategy for, for themselves. They were the 100% owners of the company. Uh, looked at all kinds of different options, uh, selling the company, doing, you know, whatever, and uh, came up with this idea of an ESOP, uh, an employee stock ownership plan, and basically sold 100% of the stock of the company to the employees. Um, it, it proved to be a, a very valuable tool, uh, gave them an exit strategy, uh, and, and also built a sense of ownership with the employees, that, that they truly were the owners of the company. Uh, in 2007, uh, we went through another ownership change and the ESOP sold the majority share to a, um, uh, a private equity firm, but we maintained a portion of ownership with the employees. Uh, and so that even still today, they, um, they maintain a, an ownership in the company. Uh, and it really drives that, that sense of ownership with them that uh, the decisions we make and the results that we get affect their, you know, value in the business. So uh, it's one of those rare things. Without being a public company, you still get you still get ownership, and uh, uh, and it's a valuable thing when you when you stand when I stand in front of them and, and show them financial results for for the year for the quarter or whatever. Uh, and we talk about value. We talk about you know what that means to them as owners of the company. Um, it, it's it's it may be a little challenging for a 25 year old to understand how that impacts them because it, it, it essentially uh, rolls into a 401k uh, plan. Uh, but for somebody my age, it's a, it, it's a big impact because you understand you know what that means. Sure. What's your strategy? What, what, what differentiates HMS from your competitors? Well, I, I, tell, um, I tell prospective customers uh, all the time, um, you know, we, we have four or five kind of primary competitors that we, that we go against all the time. All of them very good companies, all of them uh, good products. Uh, we fit really well into um, uh, corporate environments, uh, so where we have uh, uh, companies that own multiple hospitals, uh, are, we're well suited for that and have a strong track record for that. But I tell people all the time, um, you know, you're buying software and, and there's several companies out there that can deliver good software. But at the end of the day, it, it's who in two years when you have a problem, and you will have a problem, who do you feel comfortable that you can pick up the phone and call them and you can call anybody within the company and, and you can get somebody to help you. You can get a resolution. Or if you're looking to grow your business, who do you feel comfortable that will come and sit around the table with you and help you figure out, okay, how do I do this? 
and, and I think we've proven that that's the kind of company that, that we are. Uh, very accessible, very open. Um, you know, I go visit customers routinely, um, no matter where they are, how big, how small. And, uh, and I think we've just created that atmosphere within our business that that's, you know, we're, we're people you want to do business with. One of the academic areas that we try to focus on here at Lipscomb, Tom, as a faith-based institution is the challenge of creating cultures of integrity within businesses. Uh, what are your thoughts about doing that? How have you done that at HMS? Well, it, it, it starts, as, a, as we talked about earlier, um, or I view, it, it really starts with the example that, that I and, and my management team set with our, with our employees. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can provide them that code of conduct and th those principles that we want to live by, those values that we talk about and that we, um, you know, e every uh, employee meeting, uh, I discuss the values, the, the HMS values. But at the end of the day, it really becomes, do I live that every day and, and do they see me demonstrating those values with our customers? Uh, when there is a problem or when there is uh, a situation that needs to be handled, how do we do that? Um, and so when, when you have uh, a large number of people that all have different backgrounds, that have worked in other places and experienced different things, uh, it, it's a process of, uh, of sort of constant communication of it, uh, of what those values are, those principles are. Uh, but then it's also the everyday living and, and, and how, do we, how do we demonstrate that just like I try to do with my kids at home and, and let them see the example that I set. Um, we try to do that with our employees as well so that they understand what, what the expectations are from somebody that works at HMS. What do you do as a leader seeking to demonstrate that level of commitment? When you come upon a situation where you've got to decide between doing what's right versus profitability, well, uh, you know, I, I always want to do uh, the right thing for the customer, um, but but you also view it, or we view it from the standpoint of of uh, the customers made a long term commitment to us. Uh, they're spending a lot of money to to use our system. It's not like going to the store and buying a sack of groceries and next week I can go to the other grocery store and buy it. It's not going to happen. So, so for me it's about building those long-term long relationships and, and those uh, creating that sense of trust with HMS uh, because um, I, I want them to be my customer for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Uh, and I've got to demonstrate that, that type of integrity and that, and that type of um, uh, behavior with them so that they feel good about that. Uh, and so it is about, um, about developing trust to create that long-term relationship that, that, number one, I can meet their needs, but that I'm also going to do it in a way that, that they feel good about doing business with me. Tom, let me ask you one last question. Uh, I, I don't want this to sound like a morbid question, but uh, I always like to ask this question. So if, uh, if you were at the end of your uh, time on this earth and you uh, could pre-select what's going to go on your tombstone, what would that be? Um, well, that, that is a, that's a tough question. You know, I, I, I want to say that, that I, I hope when, it's, when this is over, when this life is over for me, that, um, you know, the, the number one thing is that, that uh, people would say I was faithful to God, uh, that I was a good husband, a good father, and that I treated people the right way. Um, you know, that's the only thing I know to do, and I hope, I hope when, when life is over that that's, uh, that's the way people look at me. Well, that's a great summation, and we should all say the same thing. Thanks for being with us, Tom. Yeah. It's an honor to have you on the Lipscomb campus. Our guest has been Tom Stevenson, who's the president and CEO of Healthcare Management Systems. We hope you'll join us again soon.